Hey there, and welcome to the dev channel, Max Codes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can create a basic UI collection view layout and get something like this on the screen, okay? Now, real quick, I wanna let you know that this is the first video in my, up and my upcoming UI collection view course, which includes the Pinterest layout, the drag and drop layout, and a couple other things, okay? So I don't intend to plug it too much here, but I just want to let you know, and I want to let course buyers know that this video is the only video from that course that's on my YouTube channel, or at least for now, but I'm not going to put more than 10% of the videos on my YouTube channel. I want to keep that content very separate to you to me. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started in building this collection view. See you in just a second. All right, welcome to the first Pinterest section. Let's go ahead and hop into it by creating a new Xcode project and choosing single view application. Let's go ahead and name this Pinterest and then hit next and create our project. All right, I'm gonna drag this up here and I'm just gonna expand it and then zoom into my code a bit so that you can see it better on the screen. All right, I'm gonna go to viewcontroller.swift, zoom in a little bit more, and I think that's a good size. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is just get our collection view on the screen. Once we have it on the screen, we'll register some cells and put some images in those cells. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to say let collection is equal to UI collection view. Let's go ahead and initialize this with a frame and a collection view flow layout. Let's choose UI screen dot main dot bounds for our frame. Let's hit tab and initialize a UI collection view flow layout. Let's go ahead and initialize it and we're good to go. All right, let's go ahead and add it to the sub view. Let's say view.add sub view collection. And let's give it a background color of red just to see if it's on the screen. All right, let's compile our application and I'm gonna choose the iPhone XR simulator and get it, get it up and running on that simulator. All right, so while that's compiling, what I want you to do is go to app delegate and we want to set it up from the app delegate. So what I want you to do is just say window is equal to UI window. And then I want you to say window is equal to, sorry, window question mark dot make key invisible and window dot root view controller is equal to view controller like so. The reason we're doing this is because if we ever want to come back and add something cool like a UI navigation bar or a UI tab bar controller, we can easily do that in here in code and we don't have to mess with storyboards in the slightest. Okay, so our collection view is on the screen and we have it set up from our app delegate. Let's go to viewcontroller.swift. Let's get the background color and change it to dot white. And then what I want to do is pull this background color and put it right below our declaration of collection just to keep things neat and organized. All right, so we're ready to start adding cells on the screen. Let's do so by going down here and writing an extension from view controller and deriving it from, or basically conforming to the protocol, UI collection view delegate flow layout. And then I want you to just override the method size for row app, size for item app, hit return, and then let's return a CG size of half the screen because that's what our Pinterest layout requires. And then a height of just like two to 300 pixels. So we'll say collection view dot frame dot width divided by two, and then a height of 400 pixels. Let's do that. And then I wanna just pop over to the completed app and show you what I mean. The reason we're doing this is because we want the collection view cell to take up half the screen, okay? And I'll show you how we can modify this later on to have maybe like three columns or something. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go into our collection here and say collection.delegate is equal to self. This is basically going to call this method in a sense, you could say. Okay. The next thing we need to do is write another extension for our UI collection view data source to actually get cells on the screen. So let's say extension view controller UI collection view data source 
And let's just go ahead and try and compile it, and it's going to give us an error. And that's because we don't conform to the protocol the way it requires. Let's hit this red dot and hit fix to add the protocol stubs, and you'll see these two methods. If you weren't able to get those in there like that, you can also just say number of items at inside of this extension and hit return and it will pop up. You can do the same with self write a You just have to type in self write a Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to return a number of items. Let's just go with three for now. And then now let's DQ our cell and return it to our collection view. DQ reusable cell with identifier cell for index path, index path. Let's go ahead and not type that with caps. And now let's return the cell. If you don't understand what's going on here, just stand by. You will after enough practice with collection views, but this is common practice and you just have to get used to these kind of methods, even though they can be kind of confusing. Okay. Now I will explain the reuse identifier a bit. We have to basically put a string here and then register our cells. It doesn't have to be capitals, although I like to keep it at capitals because it's just kind of out there and you can see it. Let's go ahead and recompile our application and nothing's going to happen because we haven't really set the data source. So let's go ahead and under collection.delegate, let's say collection dot data source is equal to self. Now when we recompile our application, it's going to check our UI collection view data source implementation, and it's going to try and return three items, which we'll call the self write a method three times. We'll get an error of NS type exception, of type NS exception. And if you scroll up here in the log, you'll see it says could not DQ a view of kind UI collection view, UI collection element kind cell with identifier cell. Now, the reason this is happening is because we haven't registered it. Notice how in the log it says with identifier cell, capital cell, that's because we put cell there. If we put ASDF, it would say with identifier ASDF. So what we need to do is we need to register a cell for this collection view with identifier cell. The reason we do this is because if we want multiple types of cells, we can register multiple types of cells by giving them different reuse identifiers. Although for purposes in this course, we're only gonna be using one reuse identifier and in 90% of the applications you build on iOS with UI collection view, you're only going to register one type of cell. All right, so let's go ahead and go up here and let's say collection dot register cell class. You'll see it says registers a class for use in creating new collection view cells. Go ahead and say UI collection view cell dot self. And for reuse identifier, you guessed it, cell. Okay, so we now have cell on the screen and cell on the screen, and we're ready to recompile our application and actually see these on the screen. Now, if we compile this right now, we're still not going to see anything because we don't really have anything in our cell. So a quick way to make sure we can see our cells before we compile is to just give it a background color. So usually what I'll do is I'll say cell dot background color is equal to dot red. And then when I compile my application to see if my collection view cells are on the screen, I can see them on the screen because we're returning a size as well as a color on our cell. You'll see now that we have cells, but for some reason, they're all in one column, right? Now, the reason it's doing this is because our cells are the exact width divided by two. And we have an inset or content inset on our collection view. So it's going to have a little bit more space, which means each one of these cells is a little bit more wide than it needs to be a little bit less, and you'd see it in two columns. So let's go ahead and hop into the next video where I'll show you how you can fix this problem and we can learn a bit more about the properties on UI Collection View. See you in just a second.